Hi, everybody. <laughs> I hope you're all ready for this because today I'm going to do a tutorial for you on facial details, specifically eyes and hopefully glasses if I get time for it. I'm sorry about my voice, I just keep getting sick. <laughs> um, I will try and edit out any like coughing and spluttering I do, I'm so sorry, this is gross. I hope I can get through this whole thing without dying. So, um, as you can see, I have here um, a freshly prepared, kind of sketchy Markiplier face. Um, and the aim today is going to be to teach you how I draw eyes uh, and the specific details I look for when I am drawing eyes um, and also glasses. So it's particularly convenient that Markiplier both wears glasses and has eyes. So a little bit of backstory for you guys. I started out with my artistic style by trying to be, what's a nice way of putting it, overly realistic. Um, I, I would pretty much carbon copy a photo or a reference and although I was very good at that, at least I hope I was very good at that, I always was frustrated that I didn't have my own style and that all I was really doing um, was exactly what a camera could do or a photocopier could do. <laughs> so that's when I started my struggle of about two-ish years of trying to figure out what sort of style I wanted to go for and I get closer every day, I'm still not there, but it's because of those years of trying to carbon copy people that I've picked up some really good, I wouldn't say techniques, but I'd say awareness of the face um, and what sort of features to look for when you're painting. So starting out here um, with my Markiplier face, first of all, we're gonna start with this reference photo. Um, love the new hair. It's my fucking favorite thing. We're using Markiplier today, and I want you guys to be aware that some of the things that I say about drawing eyes with Markiplier are not going to apply with everyone, mainly because he's got quite a prominent um, epicanthic fold, which is like this part over the eye, so he doesn't have like a sunken eyelid. Um, so there are a couple of things that are different with Markiplier's eyes. Um, to maybe other people's eyes, but this will help if you do want to draw anyone who has um, an epicanthic fold. Um, so what we're going to start off with doing is just getting the... What's the part of the eye that's not the iris and the pupil? The white bit. There's got to be a name for that. Um, but you'll notice that the white bit is never white. So it's usually like, if not a ready gray, then like a pinkish gray. Um, I might actually go for a more pink gray. Um, and it's yeah, usually about halfway down the palette if it's not in direct light. If it's in direct light, it'll be more up here, but he's not, so let's start down there. Um, and I'm not gonna really worry about keeping inside any lines. I'm just gonna give him edges, oops, probably a good idea when you're doing this to also have quite a high opacity on your brush, which I don't, so I'm just gonna go over that a couple of times. So, once he has the white bit, we're gonna start drawing some details and we're gonna draw them in quite a dark color, because um, you can always go over it later if it's not right. What I'm doing now is really paying a lot of close attention to the shape of his eyes and the general shape and I'm going to draw a line the whole way around it. That's just because I like to have some sort of guiding in there when I go to do the details later. 
So what you'll notice with eyes is that with the lower lid, that's usually going to be quite a lot straighter than the upper lid. Uh, and the upper lid is not just going to be like an oval. The upper lid is going to, most of the time, have this little weird bit in the corner. I really should have like studied what all of these bits are called before doing this. Sorry, guys. We're going to call it the whites of the eyes. It is the whites of the eyes. That's, that's what it's called, right? Anyway, um, the weird bit in the corner. Um, so you'll have the weird bit in the corner. It'll probably rise up a little bit. You'll have the lower lid. And then usually you'll have like a curvy uppy bit. <laughs> so technical. Uh, and then something that sort of goes towards the outside. And then you'll have your iris and your pupil, which is usually not that big, but yeah. So it's gonna be more of that shape, not just that. Cool? You'll notice too, I never work in like 100% opacity. That's just me. I'm a bit of a pussy. If you want to, there's nothing stopping you. Um, so once I've got that in there, I am going to put in his iris and pupil. Now, I'm doing something a little bit different to my reference photo. I like him to look like he's looking straight ahead and Mark's eyes are a little bit weird. They go wonky and it always puts me off when I'm drawing his photos. So, um, I'm going to have him stare straight ahead and I'm just gonna fill it in doesn't have to be perfect again. Now if you're having trouble drawing a pupil and iris, um, my best advice would probably be to start out just drawing a circle. So if we had our little eye here, but I would draw a circle then I would copy that and paste it on the other side and draw a circle. And then I would rub out the top and the bottom until you had just that bit in the eye there. Cool. So once I've done that, I'm gonna start looking for other details. So you'll notice that his top lid here is quite dark. That is because where I have like a sunken eyelid. Um, Mark has a like fold that goes all the way down to the top of his eyelid. So I'm going to put a little bit of shading across the top of his eye. I'm gonna take some skin color from his lower lid. <coughs> and we're back. Sorry about that. Oh, wow. Um, as I was saying, I'm going to take some skin colour um, and sort of angle his eyes up a little bit. Now, you'll notice that I am painting on a layer underneath my sketch. Generally speaking, I will start off underneath my sketch so that I've got some guidelines and then I will move to painting over my sketch later on. Um, and I never really delete the sketch layer um, just because I find that I'm lazy and a lot of the time I don't fill in where the sketch lines are so when I remove it I've got all these little white dots everywhere. <sighs> That's just me though. <laughs> the next thing I'm going to do is continue to shape his eye a little bit. Okay, so another thing that most people's eyes will do um, is have a little bit of lighter colour quite close to the lower lid or on the lower lid and also in the corner here. Now that I am feeling a little bit better about the shape of Mark's eyes, 
I am going to start doing the detailing around his eyes. Now, when someone is wearing glasses, this can be a little bit difficult, but you'll find it will look a lot better once you have drawn the glasses in. Now, in my current style, I don't pay too much attention with trying to be accurate. I try and get the general feel of the thing, and I know that sounds pretentious, but it's sort of the same idea, I guess, as the Impressionists, in that um, I don't need it to look exact. I need it to be representative, I guess, of what sort of feeling I'm trying to evoke and also just the person I'm drawing. <laughs> um, so I try and give it a lot of character and that was something that a lot of my earlier portraits just didn't have. So hey, I might be going overboard with it at the moment, but um, I guess that will develop as I develop. Um, okay, so now I've got it looking relatively eye-like. I'm going to step back and have a look at it all together. Now, do I like the look of those eyes? The short answer is no, but that's okay. Because when you've been working on something close up for a long time, um, you're not getting the big picture and you're not seeing them in context. You're just seeing the details. So now that I can see his eyes, and look at these eyes, I can see exactly what I need to fix. And that's namely that Mark's eyes here have a lot more shape to them at the moment in that they're a lot more 3D, mine are just flat. Um, and they're also a lot more emotional. So I'm going to try and fix that. Ready? Okay. And of course, a little flecks of light. This is my favorite part because it always takes absolutely fucking ages to get it to look right. Sorry, I think my camera just turned off. <clears throat> but yeah, that's, that's essentially that for eyes. Um, I guess the main things to remember would be that um, you need to pay close attention to your reference first off. Um, remember the eyes are not simple, they're not, you know, a circle um, or even an oval. Uh, you've got to pay attention to what the top lid and the bottom lid are doing, um, or if you have a really prominent epicanthic fold, pay attention to where the shadows are. Um, the other thing I would say, because there aren't really any in this photo, eyelashes are another thing. Now, when I have eyelashes in a photo at the moment, I tend to, uh, and it's terrible, um, just do a bit of a like squiggly thing where the eyelashes are and it comes out looking like they have eyelashes. Now that is purely because, like I was saying earlier, I'm not going in for detail at the moment. If you were though, eyelashes were the bane of my existence. You've got to remember what direction they, I guess, go in. So they're not all going to be like that. In general, eyelashes will be more prominent towards the side of the eye because they do tend to grow out a little bit at the side of the eye but when you're facing forward 
the top of your lid, um, the eyelashes are also going to be facing forward, so you're only going to see a very small bit of them. Um, I will do another tutorial, I think, on irises and pupils because that is a whole other ball game. Um, and when you're doing um, quite a large portrait like this one, it doesn't really matter so much what the pupil or the iris looks like, especially when you've got really dark eyes and Mark does have very dark eyes. Um, but when I was when I'm drawing someone like say Sean, um, who has blue eyes, that can get a little bit difficult. So I'll do another tutorial on that um, in the future. Um, so that's eyes, um, and because I've got time, I'm going to quickly do glasses as well. So 